speak that from experience. I've I've only been in jail to visit people, but I got right back out immediately. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that that was a good thing. Turn to Matthew, Matthew chapter four. As you're turning there, I wanted to uh, read you a little story about these men that shot some deer. These two hunters, they got a pilot to fly them into the far, far north for deer hunting. And they were quite successful in their venture and bagged six bucks. The pilot came back as arranged to pick them up. They started loading their gear into the plane, including the six deer, but the pilot objected and he said, the plane can only take four of your deer. You'll have to leave the other two behind. They argued with him. The year before, they had shot six, and the pilot had allowed them to put them all aboard. The plane was the same model and capacity. Reluctantly, the pilot finally permitted them to put all six aboard, but when they attempted to take off and leave the valley, the little plane could not make it, and they crashed into the wilderness. Climbing out of the wreckage, one hunter said to the other, Do you know where we are? I think so, replied the other hunter. I think this is about the same place where we crashed last year. (laughs) They just didn't learn their lesson, I guess. We kind of do the same thing, you know. You ever heard of the term ponderisms? What is that? What is a ponderism? It's something that you just stop and you think about and you consider and you kind of dwell on it for a little bit. Well, I've got some of those for us to consider. One of them is, I used to eat a lot of natural foods until I learned that most people die of natural causes. (laughs) There are two kinds of pedestrians, the quick and the dead. Healthy is merely the slowest possible rate at which one can die. (laughs) These are good. They get better. Health nuts are going to feel really stupid someday lying in hospitals dying of nothing. Have you ever noticed since everyone has video on their phone that no one talks about seeing UFOs like they used to? Maybe they weren't really seeing them back then. Whenever I feel blue, I start breathing again. I'm going to stop right there, Coach. There's just uh, too much, too much. How many of you deal with this problem called temptation? If your hand's not up, you're lying. Okay? We all deal with the thing of temptation. Uh, Temptation is that one thing that no one is exempt from. Right. It just... and, And the truth is, we all are tempted to sin daily. Yeah. The Bible says that Satan walketh about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so he is really pumped up making sure that we fail. And it don't matter if you're four years old or a hundred years old. He still wants to cause us to sin. And he's good at it. So this thing of temptation is a problem and it's something that we deal with every day. Dealing with it varies from person to person. Yeah. Okay. Some people fail regularly and some uh, are victorious often. So what's the difference? Why is it that some people fail regularly and, and really probably have given up? And, and, and they say, well, that's just me or that's who I am. I can't help it. It just happens. And they've given up. They don't even fight the temptation. They just kind of cave right in and, and sin. And then there's some people that are also tempted, but they walk past and they turn away and they fight the temptation and they win. 
most of the time. So what's the difference? Why is it that some people fight this thing of temptation and win pretty regular and then some people don't? What is the key? What is the answer? What is the winning formula? There's a story here in Matthew chapter 4 where Jesus was tempted by Satan himself. Not one of his demons, but by Satan himself. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 4. We're going to read the whole story. It's 11 verses long. Verse 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I'm going to stop right there just for a second. Notice that the Bible says that the Spirit, that's the Spirit of God. God led Jesus to be tempted of the devil. God did not tempt him. But he led Jesus. In other words, he told Jesus, go to the wilderness, you're going to be tempted of the devil. Now, what's important to recognize here is this. Even though God does not tempt us, He allows us to be tempted. And for good reason. Brother Tommy preached about it just last week. About how that when we go through trials and temptations, it makes us stronger. In other words, God is trying to shape us and mold us to be more like to His Son, Jesus. And He uses temptations and trials and hard times to do it. So that's what's going on right here. Okay? We read on, verse 2. And when He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, that's a long time to go without food, isn't it? We can't even skip a meal hardly, much less 120 of them. That's what Jesus did right here. And he was afterward and hungry. And when when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus' response, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up. It's funny how the devil doesn't give up very easily. Have you noticed that? Right. Okay, he keeps trying, he keeps trying, he tempts us with all kinds of things, and he just doesn't seem to give up. Again, the devil taketh him up into the, an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. In other words, get behind me. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Let's pray and then we'll continue. Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for loving us enough to send your Son to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Lord, I pray that you would help us to learn to hate our sins the way we should and to stop, to repent. Lord, help us in these moments of temptation to do the things that we need to do so that we are victorious over the temptation. Lord, help us to learn what we need tonight and help me to say only what I should. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. This thing of temptation is is so important because temptation can cause some pretty bad consequences. In fact, all 
sin has consequences. Right. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages or the payment of sin is death. Mm. Destruction. Devastation. That's what sin leads to. None of us want to go there. None of us want to wind up in a position where there's devastation, death, and destruction. Therefore, all of us, need to know how to deal with this thing of temptation. Jesus gives us some real good pointers here. Even though God led him into the wilderness to be tempted, we can be encouraged to understand something. 1 Corinthians 10.13, I'm going to read that to you. If you want to turn there, you can, but you don't have to. But the verse says this, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. In other words, you've never been tempted with anything that somebody else has not already been tempted with. Right. It's already happened. And it's going to happen again yeah. to somebody else. It's a, it's, it's a continual thing. Okay. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you or allow you to be tempted above that you're able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Interesting verse right after that one. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. No. Now, it's good, it's encouraging to know that Jesus told us, you're going to be tempted, but you'll never be tempted with a temptation so strong you cannot fight it. That's encouraging. Right. But here's the thing. He gives us a way of escape. It's our choice to take it right. or not. The following verse after that said, flee from idolatry. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's a temptation here to sin with the sin of idolatry. And what he's saying here is, flee from it. What if I don't flee from it? Then I'm going to fall into the temptation of idolatry. That's what's going to happen. So it's my choice if I'm going to take that way of escape or not. If I choose not to take that way of escape, then it's not God's fault that I fail and I fall into the temptation. He gave me a way. Amen. He said, run yep. from it. And I choose not to run from it. Then I'm going to fall into the temptation. Because right. it's right there. It's right in front of me. Right next to me. <clears throat> in this area of fighting temptation, strength is vital. Yes. I've heard this many times. I've said it. You've probably said it. Ah, you yielded to the temptation. I was just too weak. Mm. A lot of truth in that statement. Yeah. I was too weak. But again, whose fault is that? God gives us clear direction in His Word on how to strengthen our spiritual muscle right. so that we can fight the temptation with strength and power from Him. But we avoid it. Mm. Just like when He said to flee from idolatry, run from it, we choose not to run from it. Then we cave in, we yield to the temptation, and then we blame somebody else. Or we blame the devil. Well, the devil made me do it. Or I was just too weak. No, you just didn't run from the temptation. You had a doorway right there. You didn't take it. It was available. Or I was just too weak. Well, you were too weak because you weren't working out. Right. Spiritually speaking. <clears throat> In Proverbs 24, verse 5, the Bible says, A wise man is strong. 
Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. A wise man is strong. So how do I get wisdom? Somebody raise their hand and tell me how I get wisdom. Darius. By listening to someone. By listening to someone who is wise. Right? Okay. If you're listening to someone who's not wise, are you going to get wiser? <laughs> you're going to get dumber. You hang out with dumb people, you're going to be a dumb person. You hang out with wise people, Solomon said, you're going to be wise right. when you hang out with wise people. Okay? What's another source of getting wisdom? John? For, get it from Jesus. Uh, where, where does he live? Where can I go pick this up at? The Bible, the Word of God. Right here. It's right here. The wisdom that we need is right here. The Bible says to ask God for it, and, and we should pray, and we should ask God for wisdom, but also He gives us wisdom in paper form. Amen. It's right here. Now it's our choice whether or not we're going to seek out that knowledge. What did Solomon say? I'll read it again. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Right. How many of you are tempted to eat chocolate chip cookies before the meal? We were in Subway the other day, me and a fella, and we were standing there at the bar looking at the vegetables, and on right in front of us, on that little 8-inch shelf, are these little clear cases full of cookies. And I thought, why am I ordering a sub? I could get a case of cookies. I love sweets. I don't know about you, but I love sweets. And it's a temptation for me. Probably is for you too, or most of you. And it's hard to say no to things, isn't it? Yeah. It's hard to say no to temptation to sin. Right. So in order, in, in order to win this, this battle against the temptation, we have to be strong, right? And if Solomon, who was the wisest man who's ever lived, said, a wise man is strong, then I must, need, I must get some wisdom if I, need, if I want strength. Amen. If I'm going to fight this battle and win, I need strength, right? Right. So, my question to you, Are you seeking wisdom? Are you asking God for wisdom? Are you seeking for it in God's Word? How often do you seek for the wisdom? Let me ask a better question. How often do you want to win the battle against the temptation? If we're not willing to seek after the wisdom... Why would we expect to win the battle against temptation when we're weak? If, if me and Corey are going to get into a fight and I'm sick and I'm sneezing and I have fever and I'm so weak I can't hardly get out of my chair but we're going to fight, he's going to whip me back. Right? Because I don't have any strength. Right. That's where we are. That's right. Spiritually. When we choose not to seek after the wisdom. Remember, God gives us a way of escape and we forfeit the opportunity to take that way of escape. Amen. He's clearly stated, a wise man is strong, yea, a man who... Uh, let me read it back here. A man of knowledge increaseth strength. In other words, he's getting stronger and stronger the more he seeks after wisdom. In other words, he becomes better and better at fighting the temptation. Amen. 
Now that's important if you want to win. He also said in Proverbs 14.26, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. That almost sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? A total opposite. Fear, strong confidence. Fear, but strong confidence. This don't match. It's like oil and water, right? But that's not true. You know why there is strong confidence when you have the fear of the Lord? When you have the fear of the Lord, you're right. Because He's right. Mm. And when you line up with what He said, you're right. That's strong confidence. Not the kind of confidence that is self-confident. That's not what we're talking about. Not the kind of confidence that is prideful or haughty. That's not what we're talking about. But when you have fear of the Lord, there's strong confidence. You can deal with the temptation. You can fight the temptation. And you can win. Amen. When there's fear of the Lord. So here's a question. How do I increase my fear of God good question I'm glad you asked you got to get to know him better right okay it's like it's like this how many of you this is your first time at church tonight this church one two three four very good five really Okay, that's good. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. How many of you know who, uh, those that just raised your hand, how many of you know who Brother Tommy is? How do you know that? You just got here. I do. (laughs) Okay, but you know who he is. How long have you known him? Two weeks. Two weeks? This isn't your first time then. See him at the apartments a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. How long have you known Brother Tom? A long time? Okay. Now, <clears throat> I thought none of you knew him because you said this was your first time, <laughs> but <clears throat> just by way of illustration, let's assume that Brother Don doesn't know who Brother Tommy is until tonight. Just walked in. First time. Thanks for coming, Brother Don. Doesn't know who in the world Brother Tommy is. You know what? Brother Don doesn't have any fear of Brother Tommy. None. He don't know who he is. He don't know what kind of personality he has. He just does he don't know him. If if Brother Tommy went to Brother Don and said, Brother Don, I need to borrow five thousand dollars, can you lend that to me? Brother Don doesn't know him. Just met him. He'd probably have to say, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't do that. Um, I, that I don't have the $5,000. Which could very well be a lie because the man's wealthy as all get out. <clears throat> but he's not going to do it because he doesn't know him. Carrie, on the other hand, she knows him. She, in fact, she's known, known him all her life. <laughs> There's some fear in Carrie's heart for this guy right here. There's certain things she's not going to do or say in his presence because she knows him. That's the way it is with us and God. That's right. When we know him, we know what he's going to do when we sin. Right. We've been down that road. We've gotten the whipping. Yeah. But if if we don't know him, there's no fear of him. How do I increase my fear of God? <clears throat> Talk to him. Ask him for things that you need. Ask him to heal people who are sick. Yeah. Ask him for wisdom. 
Tell him how thankful you are of all the blessings he's given to you. And also, study his word. That's why he wrote it and gave it to us, so that we could learn more about him. Amen. If you want to increase your fear of God, get to know him. Because when you do that, the Bible says, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. When you're, when you're faced with that temptation, and all of us are, every day, right. when you're faced with that temptation, <clears throat> you'll be able to fight that temptation and win. Okay? <clears throat> Let me give you an example. Traffic issues causes me to get frustrated sometimes. What about you? How many of you drive? Okay. Now, those of you that have your hands up, <clears throat> how many of you get frustrated when you're driving sometimes? Okay. It's one of the most frustrating, especially if you live in Jacksonville. Okay. So traffic issues can cause me to get frustrated. Except, except, when I've had my mind on God and when I've studied my Bible, and especially when I've studied my Bible about the need for trials and the need for suffering in my life. When I've been reading my Bible and the Bible tells me that I'm supposed to suffer as a Christian, I'm supposed to uh, have trials in my life. When I've been reading that, you know what? I get out there and just minutes after I've been reading and all of a sudden I'm dealing with a frustrating situation on the highway, it's easy for me to recall what I just read. Right. And I remember why this is happening. This, is, this, this has to happen. God's wanting to to shape me to be more like Jesus. And He uses traffic problems to do it sometimes. Yes. So now I'm fighting this temptation to run into the back end of this car who just cut me off because I have this big steel vice on the front of my truck <laughs> and I can run into the back of their car and it won't hurt the truck at all. But it'll cause them a lot of damage. And sometimes I'm tempted to do that. <laughs> I really am. Behind that winch, that, that, that vice is a big steel winch. <laughs> Their car doesn't have a chance. And if I'm going to... And it's a temptation. It really is. But when I've been reading my Bible yeah. and I just got through praying and asking God, God, help me to shine a bright light for Jesus today. Amen. God help me to be more like Jesus today. Yeah. Well, He's helping me. He's he is allowing me to be tempted. Right. That's how He's helping me. That's an answer to prayer. Amen. If I've been praying for God to help me to be more like Jesus, and the Bible says that temptations are designed to make me to be more like Jesus, that's an answer to prayer, right? Yes. Yeah. But if I get in the car and I'm weak because I haven't been reading my Bible, I haven't been studying it, I haven't been praying, you know what's going to happen? You're going to have a, a vice in the back end of your car. That's what's going to happen. <clears throat> Lustful thoughts enter our minds. When we're weak because we haven't been studying our Bibles, because we haven't been praying, those thoughts, they grow, they grow, they get bigger. We, 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 we meditate on those sinful things and they get the best of us. Mm. Jeanette was telling me just this afternoon of a fella who uh, went into this fitness center this woman was in there working out he went in there and he raped her and he was 14 been arrested I'd say 
he probably had not been studying his Bible. And I'm not saying that jokingly. I can about bet you and win that he wasn't. Yet, you take the the fellow. And by the way, all of us are tempted. But you take the fellow that's been studying his Bible and he's been praying and he's been asking God for help and wisdom to walk a straight line to please God, then he's probably not going to do that. Amen. He's going to be tempted possibly, but he's not going to do it. Right. He's going to fight the temptation with strength. And he's going to win that temptation or win that fight against the temptation. <clears throat> Galatians 6.8 says this, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. Feed the flesh, and the flesh is going to get stronger than the pull of the Spirit. Right. but weaker in fighting temptation. So how can I feed my flesh? I'd like a little bit of input here. That's a question you need to answer. Somebody raise your hand and tell me how I can feed the flesh. I'm not talking about with food. John? Huh? Flesh, John. No, how do we feed the flesh? Not the spirit. Vicky? TV. TV. TV? Watching TV? Does that feed the flesh or the spirit? Flesh. The flesh. Okay? Music. Music? Bad music feeds the flesh or the spirit? Flesh. Good music, Christian music, gospel music feeds the spirit or the flesh? Spirit. Spirit. Okay? What is another way to feed the flesh? John? Oh, sound video games. Playing video games? Uh, Playing video games, I don't think, has ever made anybody a stronger Christian. Has it? No. Not saying that it's wrong. Some video games might be, I'm sure. But there's some video games, like Pac-Man. Do we still have Pac-Man? No, I don't play video games. Okay, There's nothing wrong about that. Unless you spend 12 hours a day on it, Next question. How can I feed the Spirit? I wasn't even finished asking the question and your hand went up. Uh, No. John, how can I feed the Spirit? By God's Word. By God's Word? Um, Pray. Pray? Very good. It left you, didn't it? Church attendance. Going to church can feed the Spirit. Huh? Use the gospel. Use the gospel. Let me ask you something. If I am, if I am reading my Bible, and then all of a sudden, someone gets up and they say something to aggravate me, am I going to cuss at them, or am I going to try to avoid or ignore what they're saying, or even better? come back with something kind to say to them. Which one am I going to do? The kindness. Why? Because I've been thinking about the Bible. I've been feeding the Spirit. The more I spend in my Bible study, my Bible reading, Bible meditation, Bible memorization, we're on to something here because we fight this temptation thing pretty regular and fail. Yeah. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if the Bible said in Galatians 6, 8, He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. You get what you, you, get what you, you, you reap what you sow. Right. If, you, if you're going to sow bad seed, you're going to reap bad crops. If you sow good seed, you're going to reap good crops. Okay? <clears throat> to fight, for instance, 
Not too long ago, we were talking about the four sins of Sodom. Okay? Now there's hundreds, if not thousands, of different types of sins that we can commit. And we're not going to go into all that. But there was four sins of Sodom. Can anybody remember what they were? Because I know that... Jeanette? Pride, abundance of bread, lack of compassion, and abundance of idleness. And idleness. Okay? These are sins. <clears throat> and if I'm going to feed the Spirit, okay, God gives us a way of escape of these temptations. If I'm going to feed the Spirit, and I want to specifically target my problem. For instance, let's say I have the problem of pride. And by the way, I do have that problem. I fight that problem. That's a sin, and I commit it from time to time. I get proud. Not sure why. I'm not good looking. I'm not real smart. And yet I can get proud like that. So, if I want to fight this temptation of pride, then I go to my Bible and I find targeted bullseye verses that helps me with that particular problem. Yeah. And Moses and Solomon both gave us some pointers on how to do this. They said this, Tie it about thy finger. How many of you ever been reading a book and in the side margin of the book you saw this hand with a string tied in a bow around the finger? How many of you have seen that? What does it mean? Remember, don't forget. Remember this. This one's important. Read it again and again. Don't forget this. Well, you know where that came from? It came from the Bible. Solomon said it. Solomon said, tie it about thy finger. You know why he said that? Because he was trying to help us to see something. Right. We are forgetful. All of us. To some degree or another. I'm on the real forgetful end of that spectrum. So it's real important for me to tie it about my finger. Tie what? Whatever. It doesn't matter. But as long as what I tie around my finger reminds me of this problem of pride, it's going to help me remember. Okay? What if I have the problem of being idle? I spend too much time watching TV or I spend too much time on video games or on my phone texting my friends all day. That's a sin. Right. The abundance of idleness is a sin. Right. So, I need to go to my Bible and I need to find some verses in my Bible that talk about this problem of idleness. Right. And I need to either memorize that verse or I need to write it down on a piece of paper and tape it to my mirror. Moses said, he said, write it on the post of your doors. He said, write it and put it on the gate post. You know why he said that? Because nobody hurdles their fence when they leave the yard. They all go through the gate. That's why he said, write it on the doorpost. You know why? Because none of us climb out the window when we're going out of the house. Except for me and my brother when we were 12 years old. At night. We all go through the door. And every time we go through the door, we're going to see that verse. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And it's going to remind me, don't be proud. How can we fight this problem of temptation? We get stronger by studying His Word and spending time talking to God regularly. Well, how often do I need to do that, Brother Bruce? How often do you want to win the battle? Amen. How often do you want to lose the battle? Mm. Do you want to walk around through life like this? 
If you're not spending time in the Bible, that's exactly how you're walking around through life. Amen. Just like this. Because yeah. that's what we are without Him. And when you study your Bible, take those, take those little verses, write them down on a little piece of paper, stick it in your pocket, and look at it throughout the day. And even share it with somebody. Hey, you know what? This is what I read this morning. It helps me with my problem. It says, Pride goes before destruction and a holy spirit before a fall. I have a problem with that. And that verse helped me today. And I just wanted to share that with you. Well, you know, when you do that, you remember it a whole lot more. Amen. God gives us a way of escape. Yes. Yeah. God gives us a way to build our muscle. We choose not to take it. That's why we fail in the temptation. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for loving us. I thank You for being so good to us. Lord, you, You're so kind and You make a way for us to, to fight this battle of, of temptation on a daily basis. Lord, I pray that You'd help us to make the decision to spend time with You so that we can gain strength, we can gain wisdom and knowledge, so that we can fight these battles and win. Lord, I thank You so much for Your Word and the power that it provides and the direction that it gives. Help us, Father, to use this mighty resource that You've given to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for page 483. 483.